Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. It is time to remember James Drury, that handsome gentleman who made an impressive statement in the entertainment industry with his talent. I decided to scan photos of legendary Hollywood stars recently. The moment I saw that black hat in a classic cowboy's swing and ostrich walking boot, I recognised him, the Virginian prodigy and his boisterous life and career story. Why was James Drury riding ponies in diapers? I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate your generous support on Patreon and your activity on the channel. These videos would not have been possible without you. Big thanks to those who watched the video until the end. James Drury, the positive definition of cowboy character. If there is one fantastic movie character I love so much for his charisma and independent nature on screen, it should be this enigmatic man of few words. Some say James Drury is naturally designed to fight for justice. At least that is what he portrays in that epic outing. They say he was a man with no name, but the Virginian. Yes, he was able to intelligently accomplish a mission of honesty and core values as an actor with a strong principle in life. His character did not have a name in the 249 official episodes of the show. What exactly did he do? For want of something to describe Drury, he was the no-name, straightforward foreman of the Shiloh Ranch on that series which happens to be one of the longest-running westerns in history. Displaying 90 minutes of action for every 30 episodes in a season, the Virginian no doubt had one of the toughest production schedules in history. In case the name James Drury did not sound familiar to you, you may be still very young around the 1960s when the first season of the long-running Western series began. Drury himself is one actor that had a lavish career, enjoyed an incredible insight into the art of movie-making, and showed admirable respect for colleagues and friends. A lot of fans say Drury won their heart with his performance. He is no doubt an all-time favourite for lovers of Western series, especially the classic cowboy genre. When asked some years back about how he was able to achieve that very amiable fit, Drury told enthusiasts that actors are the same thing as magicians. Their job is to do a make-believe of reality, creating the illusion of reality. Drury once wrote an article detailing some sights and sounds about his life and revealing an interesting side of his personality that no one knew about. He is indeed one man almost everyone says lived by the cowboy code till the end of his life. I learned that this stunning actor was married three times, but only found his true missing rib in his third wife, Carl Ann Drury. The duo got wedded in 1979 and would remain in marital bliss until her demise. To take the bond to eternity, Drury followed his wife and lover to the ghostly world some months later. Everyone thought Drury made a perfect character for his role, which was why the producers picked him for that. He ran the ranch with his talent and was ready to dispel intruders at every point in time, an act he perfectly executed. There is also an indication that Drury tried his best to enhance the quality of the show. It almost severed his relationship with top studio executives, but most times his ideas came out successful and further made him a genius. Some of the areas of disagreement were not allowing the use of the costly camera crane and Universal Studio tours on set while the show was being filmed. James Drury was born in New York City sometime in 1934. His parents lived in the city, but his mother Beatrice Crawford Drury, who is from Salem, Oregon, had little Drury frequenting her family ranch in Oregon. A regular summer holiday on the farm allowed him to learn a lot about ponies. He may have been brought up under strict academic conditions, being that his father, James Child Drury, was a New York University professor of marketing, the institution he later attended. Growing up as a little boy on a rural ranch, Drury was greatly influenced by his maternal grandfather, who taught him woodsman skills and marksmanship, so he developed enough interest in riding horses and outdoor lifestyle. He was expelled from high school in Los Angeles for a reason not very obvious, but it happened just before graduation. His father would later bring him to NYU, where he later confessed that it was not easy being at the institution, and was quoted to have said, No one wants to go to a school that has their father as a teacher. Ranch life and cowboy ways provided a background that left an indelible mark on Drury. 
even as he discovered a career that would help him perfectly express his talent in acting. It seems he always wanted to take up acting as a career, because at the age of eight he was said to have appeared as King Herod in a kid's Christmas production, and he liked it. About four years after, he made his first professional acting with the touring company of Life with Father. After studying drama at New York University and receiving extra lessons at UCLA to finalise his degree, where he was trained as a professional actor, Drury was said to have appeared in 12 Shakespeare plays and 18 Shaw plays before leaving New York and stage production to try his talent in Hollywood. On arrival, he went to the movies with MGM. After signing with the studio, Drury had minor parts in Blackboard Jungle, Love Me or Leave Me, and The Tender Trap, all in 1955, plus Forbidden Planet in 1956. He probably did not fit into what MGM was looking for, or he had less confidence in acting at the time that he was let go by the studio after about a year. He stayed briefly with 20th Century Fox before moving to Universal. His stay with Fox Studio the following year saw him in movies with Elvis Presley and Pat Boone in their respective film debuts, Love Me Tender in 1956 for Elvis and Bernadine in 1957. After trying with little success in movies, his shift to TV Western was just natural, as it made him utilise his enduring love of ponies, cowboy lifestyle and the likes, which he enjoyed with his role as the Virginian. It is not surprising that his part in the production as the mysterious ranch foreman became the most remarkable thing about him. Some said the lesson he learned from his grandfather, who moved west by wagon train from Missouri in the 18th century, prepared him for this performance. Drury is also featured in some episodes on other shows like The Gunsmoke. As a way of recognition for his talent, he was inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. When he was invited to TV Westerns, the casting directors asked if he could comfortably handle ponies, and he told them yes. Of course, that is one of the things he learned as a kid, so it would not be difficult for him. I'd been riding horses since I was in diapers, he was quoted to have said. As revealed by Drury in his article, almost all actors would say the same thing, but when the time comes they would ride off in all directions. He revealed that if the initial TV shows he did were successful, he would not have been chosen to be part of the Virginian story. He also recalled working with Lee J. Cobb as one of his best personalities that he would like to always be with, of all actors who appeared as the owner of Shiloh. Then for his favourite episode, Drury will always cherish The Mountain of the Sun, which saw Dolores Hart appearing as a missionary destined for Mexico. As luck would have it, shortly after recording that episode, Hart decided to say goodbye to the movie industry so she can become a Catholic nun. Drury hinted how he had driven her down to her newfound vocation thereafter. I drove her into a convent, he had said. He also would not forget an actor friend and co-star, another TV cowboy, Doug McClure, who appeared as Trampus in The Virginian. When the fellow died in 1995, Drury felt very disheartened, because he was good and his right-hand pal in the show. Being someone he talked with about three times a week for nearly 30 years, he described his death as something that left a big hole in his life. Expectedly, Drury had time to visit Salem and reminisced about his childhood. He also shared his experiences about the town and how it contributed to who he became in life. A huge part of him will forever be grateful to Salem, the place he learned to ride ponies on his grandfather's 100-acre farm, the same grandfather he behaved like in his The Virginian character role. His interesting adventure in acquiring skills as an outdoorsman and a marksman in the Ankeny Hill neighbourhood would become his greatest career strength a man that personally developed an interest in driving long distances and making a journey of about 1,120-mile drive from Canab to Salem so he could meet a crowd of fans who mobbed their hero in a welcome gesture. A man that has been smoking since he was eight must have had a practical policy on that because he goes downstairs to inhale his bum hip and harassing smokes. He still recalled how his father had given him a cigarette to light the bangers, and he tasted it secretly in a blast of air, then another. 
He enjoyed the feeling that later led to stealing cigarettes from his dad's pack until he was apprehended. While unwinding, Drury is often seen with his cup of coffee and the spiralling smoke from his cigarette, as the fag danced in between his lips as he talked, something that grew with him and became more than a habit. As most people would, Drury cherished talking about those refreshing memories, especially when he meets an elderly person who remembered the Virginian. He derived pleasure in discussing every scene of it as possible, because it provided a kind of morale boost to his ego and makes my heart sing, he says. One interesting thing about Drury and his famous shady hat is that he rarely appears in public without wearing one. If what he says is anything to go by, there are about fifty such black hats in his collection. He ensured that he had them on at every public appearance, especially at Western events, jubilees and autograph shows. This great talent is dearly loved by fans who would always gather to take a photo with him as necessary. The photos are usually free of charge, but an 8x10 glossy with his signature was available for $20, as his manager does not fail to bring several collections of that for fans to choose from. Drury is the opposite of what you will describe as mysterious, because of his level of honesty in interacting with fans and visitors. The reason his teeming fans will always need him to be as fresh as their usual gallant cowboy who rode into their bedroom on a white Appaloosa, that epic pony referred to as Joe D, and seized their hearts. An electronic adaptation of Owen Wister's 1902 novel with the same name, The Virginian, was prepared by decision-making producers, Roy Huggins' team, including his son-in-law Frank Price, who later became Columbia and Universal studio boss. It aired on NBC for more than nine seasons, and was third in line among the extended westerns with only Gunsmoke and Bonanza as first and second respectively. Drury became a key figure with his co-star Doug McClure as the only two cast that appear in all the seasons. On how tasking the show was during production being a 90-minute show, Drury in a recent interview before his demise noted that the process is equivalent to doing a movie every week. The crew had to record as long as 79 minutes and 30 seconds worth of film, which was equivalent to some full feature films of the era. While the idea of a 90-minute show seemed like a drastic approach, he noted that it is only the Virginian that was successful with 90 minutes in all Western series. Though the process was not achieved by lucky chance, as it had a lot of difficulties in terms of logistics and the filming procedures, perhaps for the number of film shots that are taken to meet the duration, he supposes that the team had good stories and good writers, alluding to the fact that it will be much easier to spot a bad script in a longer duration than a shorter version. Producers had to film two or three scenes simultaneously as each episode is needed every week, and it took eight days to fully produce one. That was how tasking it was for Drury and other crew members. On one occasion I was in five of the episodes the same day, Drury noted. Famously quoted for his cowboy way, which he learned to abide in, if it's not true, don't say it, if it's not yours, don't take it, and if it's not right, don't do it. In its final year, the Virginian was changed to the men from Shiloh, but its ratings declined unexpectedly, leading to its end. It ended for viewers and relief to some crew members, but for Drury it was not a relief because he was ready to do more years. I felt sad, I had no need for relief, adding that he would have gone on for an additional ten years. The loss of Carol Ann, his wife of forty years, shocked him. His first marriage in 1957 to Crystal O'Thones produced two sons, Timothy and James III. The couple divorced after seven years. He married again in 1968 to Phyllis Jacqueline Mitchell. That one also ended in 1979 before he met and married Carol Ann Head the same year. Although the couple were rarely seen together in public photos, Drury talked much about his love for Anne. After marriage, the duo settled in Houston. He was mentioned to have said that he was in a wonderful marriage with a woman he has been in love with since 1975. Still depressed and heartbroken, he continued to live his life the way she had always wanted him to live, still making public appearances until his strength couldn't carry him any more. Drury died at 85 of natural causes. James Drury will always be identified as a real-life cowboy. There were other tough guys out there.
Why Jack Palance knocked out Marlon Brando. Watch this video.